Hello and welcome! This is the second video in my Toon Boom tutorial series, showing you how to create your own cartoon from start to finish using Toon Boom Harmony Premium. So if you haven't checked out the first video, make sure you do that first. However, if you're here just to learn the Toon Boom Harmony software itself, feel free to skip to the next video. But in this episode, we are going to talk about planning your animation, or pre-production. So story, script, storyboard, and animatic, which might be some steps you want to take before starting your animation. So let's get started! First, let's talk about how to make an interesting story that will draw people in and keep them invested. It goes without saying that you need to decide the setting of your story and who the protagonists are, but this will evolve and change over time as your story develops. A good place to start is to write down a premise of your story in just a few sentences. Here's some examples of some premises of existing shows. Centaur World. A hardened warhorse is transported to a land inhabited by silly, singing centaurs of all shapes and sizes. Adventure Time. Living in the post-apocalyptic land of Ooh, Finn, a 14-year-old boy, and his magical dog, Jake, embark on a series of missions to prove themselves as virtuous adventurers. Avatar The Last Airbender. The series is centered around the journey of a 12-year-old Aang, the current Avatar and last survivor of his nation, the Air Nomads, along with his friend Katara, Soka, and later Toph, as they strive to end the Fire Nation's war against the other nations of the world. It's probably a good idea at this point to determine what sort of animation you want to make. What genre will it be? Who is the target audience? Is it going to be part of a series or is it going to be a single short? Is it going to be part of a progressive narrative that will span over multiple episodes? Or will each episode be standalone stories unrelated to each other? Next, I want to talk about story structure. It might not be a great idea to start writing your script from the beginning without having any idea of what the world is, who the characters are, or what some of the plot points are. But how do you make your story interesting and not something like... Mary woke up one morning and decided to have juice with her breakfast, but to her astonishment she was all out of juice, so she went to the store to get more juice, but then she realised when she went to pay for the juice, she realised she had forgotten her money, so she went back home to get the money for the juice, and then went back to the shop to pay for the juice, and went home and had the best breakfast ever. The end. <sighs> One tool you could use is writer Dan Harmon's Story Wheel. He took centuries of storytelling principles and turned them into an easy to use guide for creating a compelling story that aims to help you not only become a better writer, but also a better storyteller. So here's the Story Wheel here. One, they are in a zone of comfort. Two, they want something. Three, they enter an unfamiliar situation. Four, they adapt to it. Five, they get what they wanted. Six, they pay a heavy price. Seven, they return to a familiar situation. Eight, something has changed. I also want to talk about Glenn Gares, who is a professional writer for movies and television. He came up with six questions that he describes as the holy grail of creating a story. And those questions are, who is it about? What do they want? Why can't they get it? What do they do about it? Why doesn't that work? And how does it end? Using these two tools is a good place to start so that you can make your story great. Of course, you can't have a great story without having great characters. So make sure your characters are well thought out because you're going to be telling your story through them. Determine their goals, strengths, weaknesses, conflicts, and give them unique personalities. If you have multiple characters in your story, you want to be able to distinguish them from each other. Creating good dialogue for your characters is crucial. Make it natural and believable. Read each character's dialogue and ask yourself, does this sound like my character? Having intimate knowledge of the character and their backstory is definitely going to help with this. The dialogue is essentially a tool to advance the narrative. Almost every line should tell us something about the character and their role in the story. Show, don't tell. When something interesting happens in your story that changes the fate of your character, don't have the character tell us about it. Instead, show the scene. People watching your animation have a right to see the best parts of the story play out in front of them. And the same goes with character personalities as well. If your character is an angry person, for example, don't have them saying, Grr, I'm angry. But instead, maybe have them kicking over the bin in a park, or something like that. 
As long as you're taking all of this information into consideration, you'll be in a good place to start writing your script. But remember, writing like most things, it does take a lot of practice, it's going to take time to get it right. The first draft of your script probably isn't going to be a great one. Keep revising it and keep plugging those plot holes. Does every part of your story make sense? Keep revising it until it does, man. And remember to take breaks to avoid burnout. When you're away from your desk, perhaps carry a small notepad so you can get your ideas down on paper when they come to you and then incorporate it into your story. This can be a good idea if you're experiencing writer's block. And sometimes an idea can come to you when you least expect it and you can be influenced by the world around you. Some of my best ideas actually come to me as I'm going to sleep, so I like to keep a notepad on my bedside table. After you think it's finished, make sure you send it out to people you trust, so friends and family, to get their honest feedback on it, and then revise it again. But how would you write the script itself? Well, let me show you an example of a script format and everything you need to include. Fade in. This marks the start of the animation. Scene heading. One line description of the location and time of day. Scene number. Action, the description of the actions in the scene. Transition, used as transitional instructions for editing. Character, identifies the character who is speaking. Extension, clarifies where a character is when they can't be seen. Dialogue, the lines of speech your character says. Parenthetical, provides information on how the actor should say the line. Intercut, instructions when cutting to multiple locations. Subheader, used when there are minor changes in the location. Shot, indicates the camera angle or movement in a scene. The art of storyboarding is a powerful tool to bridge the gap between the script or story and the final animation. The storyboard is essentially a series of drawings, almost like a comic, based on the script, which will be used as a visual guide throughout the rest of the animation production to establish early ideas of things like camera staging, transitions, visual effects, audio notes, and some key character poses or scene events. The visuals though can't always tell the whole story on their own. That's why storyboards are created with titles and captions conveying major camera movements, certain actions, shots, dialogue and staging. Generally speaking, you shouldn't really expect to see many details in the storyboard. This will be more important during the design stage later on. Here's an example of a storyboard. So you've got the scene, shot, the main drawing, dialogue, action and staging. These days the storyboard is often done digitally and Toon Boom actually has another software called Toon Boom Storyboard. The next pre-production stage is the animatic, which is essentially an animated storyboard with sound. So it will use the same images in the storyboard, but stitched together and rendered as a video. It will portray movement and timing, which the storyboard doesn't, and is a much clearer representation of what your final animation will be. Using Disney Pixar's Up as an example here, you can see the animatic running alongside the final animation, which gives us an idea of how closely the final animation's timing is to the animatic. Thank you so much for watching. The next video is where the tutorials will begin and I'm going to show you how to design a character turnaround in Clip Studio Paint that we will be basing the character rig from when we build it in Toon Boom Harmony. So make sure you check that out. If you have any questions feel free to leave them down in the comments section below and I'll do my best to answer them or ask me over on Twitch where I stream this stuff five days a week. If you do find this video useful please consider liking and subscribing. I provide all of this content for free so your support really does go a long way and if you want to keep up to date with future videos feel free to click that notification bell. Until next time I'll see you in the next video.